The effect and legacy of the Great Pyramid was not only felt in the ancient world, the confounding masterpiece was the subject of replica grave markers during the period of Egyptology in the 19th and 20th century. The confusion surrounding what it is has led the world in a falsified direction as immortalized in the monument of Maria Christina of Austria. The direction of understanding has blinded us. We were told what it was. This is the point here. We were told this was a fact and we believed without questioning this because we were under the impression we were learning something new. Only now are we realizing this. The pyramid is a major influencer in world understanding. The hidden knowledge, it seems, is too precious to share publicly. If anyone has ever uncovered these hidden truths, then perhaps they have replicated it. Maybe in a highly exploratory manner, world governments and private researchers have secretly studied the dimensions of the monument and exercised a public experiment in a very secretive architectural type of way, maybe. All across the world, the Great Pyramid has been replicated. From Paris to Cleveland, architectural masterpieces have been erected as an apparent hat tip as to the influence the pyramid may be having. The entrance to the most visited museum in the entire world is the Great Pyramid. Well, not exactly, but the influence on show for all of us to see as Paris boasts of understanding of all things ancient in a secretive yet public kind of way. The symbolism here is suggestive. You enter the pyramid and go all the way down to the museum. The Tablet of Thoth suggests that the pyramid is a marker, an entrance point to something hidden deep beneath the rock, which is the Great Pyramid. These tablets tell us that the Sphinx was a lion that acts as a resting place for an underground technology that can be accessed via the Great Pyramid. Though these translations and even the validity of the Emerald Tablet is highly debatable. The Louvre Pyramid, as it's known, fills the underground museum with chasms of natural light. Opened in 1989 at an eye-watering cost of 7 billion French francs, the inverted pyramid feature hangs into the museum like a hanging spike. Alone this feature was $3 million. With a square base and an apex of 71 feet, 21 meters, its dimensions form a miniature Great Pyramid of Giza. This pyramid caused a sensation in the 80s and still maintains the power of wonder today. The Emerald Tablet was apparently discovered in Turkey as described in the book of Balinus. Following Balinus, we can trace the text to Hugo Santaya, who translated it to Latin in the 12th century. This allowed an understanding of translation by Isaac Newton that has been adopted and generally understood to read word for word as follows. I thought the master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after, these records of the mighty wisdom of the great empire. In the great city of Kior on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation, not as the little men of the present age did, the mighty ones of old live and die, but Rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descended, and the men of alchemy shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware, O men of alchemy, if ye falsely betray my teaching, for I shall cast you down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or the men of the south, lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me, knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity, knowledge that belonged to Earth's youth. 
Wise we were with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And all of these, greatest among the children of men, was my father, thought me, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands, mouthpiece after the three of the dweller of Unal, speaking to the kings with a voice that must be obeyed. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom until it burst into a consuming flame. Not desired I, but the attainment of wisdom, until a great day that command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon the mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller that his purpose might be fulfilled, purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I too approached the light emitted from the great fire. Taught me he the path to Amenti, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. Free was I of the halls of Amenti, bound not by death to the circle of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then, having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there found I great mysteries and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste of the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually from the kingdoms of the empire passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew into flower. Downward into darkness turned the thoughts of the ancients, until at last in this wrath arose from his aguanti, the dweller speaking the word, calling the power. Deep in earth's heart, the sons of Amenti heard and hearing, directing the change of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting using the logos until the great fire changed its direction. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left, standing on the great mountain of Undal, still rising out of the water. Some there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. Called to me then the master, saying, Gather ye together, my people. Take them by the arts ye have learned of far across the waters, until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians, dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow there the plan that ye know of. Gathered I then my people, and entered the great ship of the master. Upward we rose into the morning. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters vanished from earth until the time appointed was the great temple. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of alchemy. Raging they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science, until at my feet they groveled when I released them. Long dwelt we in the land of Egypt, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the master, who, while sleeping yet lives eternally, I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time, wisdom might rise again in her children. Long time dwelt I in the land of Egypt, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew into the light of knowledge, the children of Egypt, watered by the rains of my wisdom. 
Blasted, I then a path to Amenti, so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdoms, preserving the records. Grew great the sons of Egypt, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upward in soul force. Now for a time I go from among them into the dark halls of Amenti, deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of the powers, face to face once again with the dweller. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenti. Few there would be with courage to dare it, few pass the portal to dark Amenti. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes Earth's gravity, deep and yet deeper place I a force house or chamber. From it carved I a circular passage, reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex set I the crystal, sending the ray into the time-space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amenti. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the key to Amenti. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him. Even in the darkness of earth shall I meet him. I, Thoth. Lord of Wisdom, meet him and hold him, and dwell with him always. Build I the Great Pyramid, patterned after the Pyramid of Earth Force, burning eternally so that it too might remain through the ages. In it I build my knowledge of magic science, so that I might be here when again I return from Amenti. I, while I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another, Hermes thrice born, emissary on earth and I the dweller, fulfilling his commands so many might be lifted. Now return I to the halls of Amenti, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller, lift ever upwards your eyes towards the light. Surely in time ye are one with the Master. Surely by right ye are the one with the Master. Surely by right yet are one with the All. Now I depart from ye. Know my commandments. Keep them and be them. And I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal, go I down in the darkness of night. No one knows what became of the original tablet. What remains are translations and translations of translations, along with a historic timeline punctuated with disconnects and gaps. The tablet appears and disappears across the ancient world before and after the birth of Christ with periods of revival, including the Italian Renaissance. One of the most mysterious documents ever put before the eyes of man, the Emerald Tablet has been described as everything from a succinct summary of philosophy to an extraterrestrial artifact or a gift from the lost civilization, a time when gods walked among us. Believed to have been a contemporary of the historical Abraham of the Old Testament, Hermes Trismegistus was said to have traveled throughout Egypt, Greece, and Mesopotamia. He was associated with Thoth, the Egyptian god of wisdom, writing, magic, and the sciences, patron god of the sacred scribes. Thoth's name and qualities were synonymous with the Greek god Hermes, and the earthly Hermes, honorific Trismegistus, translates to thrice great. Some assert that the man was, in fact, God's incarnation.